Nous sommes en guerre. En guerre sanitaire. Pour ce certes. nouveau numéro de notre émission nous consacrée nous à la crise du coronavirus. L'Italie est ravagée par le coronavirus. On écoute beaucoup les médias et c'est important et c'est une bonne chose. Pourquoi je m'assure que j'entends davantage la parole de Dieu que ce que j'entends au travers des médias Parce que ma foi va venir de ce que j'entends. Est-ce qu'on va s'asseoir sur nos circonstances ou est-ce qu'on va se lever et marcher Mais j'aimerais vous encourager. Not to be anxious, but to get an expectation ne soyez pas anxieux, mais ayez cette attente pour cette année. That God wants to move. Que Dieu veut agir. La foi, elle dit, je suis confiné, mais je suis confiant. The coronavirus pandemic, like I guess all the negatives in life, doesn't mean that God has forgotten you. Instead, it's a season that he is especially near to you.
mais au troisième jour il est ressuscité pour que chacun d'entre nous aujourd'hui puisse avoir la liberté de l'adorer, de le glorifier. Donc, comment le vent le voit partout là où nous sommes, partout dans la francophonie, chantant au oh, gloire au nom de notre Jésus. Comment This Resurrection Sunday morning service. Bienvenue à ce service ce dimanche de la résurrection. It is so great to have you connected. On est tellement heureux que tu sois connecté. And I'm Brandon and this is Camille. Donc on se présente Camille et puis voici Brandon. And wherever you're watching from, we want to say hello. Et qu'importe là où tu te trouves, on veut te dire bonjour. And we believe for an incredible service. On Uh, souhaite vraiment uh, un, un service magnifique. And it's so great to have you with us. Ouais, on se réjouit vraiment que tu sois avec nous. I love what it says nous. in Luke 24. Ce que j'aime, uh, ce qu'on peut, ce qu'on peut voir en Luke 24. It says early in the morning. Tôt le matin. The women went to the tomb. Il y a des, des femmes qui se sont rend, rendues au tombeau. And when they got to the tomb. Et en arrivant là-bas. They found that the stone had been rolled away. Elles, elles ont découvert que la pierre avait été roulée de devant le tombeau. Two angels appeared. Et deux anges leur sont apparus. And they said this. Et voilà ce, que, ce qu'ils ont dit. They said this. Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Amen. Pourquoi cherchez-vous parmi les morts celui qui est vivant Il n'est pas ici, mais il est ressuscité. Amen. What great news today. Quelle merveilleuse nouvelle aujourd'hui. Wherever you're watching from. Ouais, de, de penser là où tu es. He rose from the dead. Il est ressuscité d'entre the, les morts. No confinement could hold him. Aucun confinement n'a pu le retenir. That tomb, the stone was rolled. Ce tombeau, cette pierre qui avait été roulée. Death roulé. couldn't hold him down. La mort n'a pas pu le retenir. Our Savior Jesus. Notre Seigneur, notre Sauveur Jésus. Rose from the dead. He did what he said he would do. Et ressuscité, et il a fait ce qu'il a dit qu'il ferait. And he rose from the dead. Il est ressuscité d'entre les morts. news, Kemi? Ouais, très très bonne nouvelle. Hein? To know our savior is alive. De savoir que notre sauveur est vivant. And because he's alive. Et parce qu'il est vivant. We can come today. Nous pouvons venir aujourd'hui. And we can pray. Prier. And we can believe God. Et en croyant en Dieu. And you know it's true. If you're watching, we live in interesting times. Et c'est clair, genre, tu, on le sait, euh, ces, ces temps là qu'on vit en ce moment sont tellement inhabituels. Here we are doing Easter from a lounge room. Je veux dire, on est en train de filmer euh, ce service de notre euh, salon. And you're a little different. Et donc c'est clairement différent. And there is a lot of need. Et il y a beaucoup de besoins. In, in our world at the moment. Dans tout le monde en ce moment. And I'm just believing this Easter that. You know, God can meet your needs. Et je veux croire qu'en cette Pâque, que Dieu vienne et rencontre ton besoin. Parce qu'il peut bouger dans les cœurs de chaque personne. He can bring peace. Amener la paix. He can bring answers. Les, les réponses. Because he's alive. Parce qu'il est vivant. And uh, today we're going to pray for a number of situations. Et uh, aujourd'hui nous allons um, prier pour un certain nombre de situations. There's a number of people who who have family members or people they know that have been touched with the virus. Mais il y en a beaucoup d'entre vous, vous avez soit des personnes dans votre famille, uh, soit des personnes que vous connaissez qui ont le virus. And we're going to pray and we're going to believe. Et nous allons prier, nous allons croire. We're going to pray for a family. Pour une famille. For relationship. Pour des relations. Needing forgiveness. Uh, qui ont notamment besoin de de, de pardon. We're going to pray for a situation where there's 
depression and violence. Il y a une situation en fait où il y a la, la dépression et la violence. If we've got someone who's believing for to to overcome an addiction. Il y a une personne qui a besoin euh, ouais, qu'on puisse prier pour euh, surmonter l'addiction. Work situations. Des situations qui sont liées au travail. Studies as well. Oui, et notamment aussi les études. So come on, whatever need you have. Donc euh, et puis toi les, les besoins que toi tu, on, que tu fais face God. en ce moment on veut amène les amène les au Seigneur en ce moment même. Father in the name of Jesus. Nous, Père dans le nom de Jésus. We thank you we can come to your throne. Room. Nous te remercions car nous pouvons accéder au trône. And right now. Et maintenant. Lord God, we bring every one of these needs to you. Nous venons et t'apportons chacun de ces besoins. Father we thank you. Nous te remercions. That nothing is impossible to you. Car rien n'est impossible à toi. And in every person's life right now. Et dans la vie de chaque personne. Father you know. Tu sais. And Father I pray that right now. Et je prie à présent. The peace of God. La paix de Dieu. Your presence. Ta présence. Will enter right where they are. Rentre et vienne là où ils en sont. Father have your way. Fais ta volonté. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dans le nom tout puissant de Jésus. And Father we pray. Et nous prions aussi. For families. Pour les familles. For situations. Pour des situations. That may be touched with this virus. Qui sont affectés par le virus. Father we speak your protection in the name of Jesus. Nous prions ta protection le nom de Jésus. Father we ask Lord God that Lord God you would strengthen and be with your people. Nous te demandons Seigneur de fortifier chaque personne. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ouais, dans le nom tout puissant de Jésus. And everyone Everyone said. Et que tout le monde puisse dire. Everyone said. Ouais. Amen. Amen. Well, how beautiful. Hey, you know, right now we're going to have a look at some testimonies of where God has moved in people's lives. À présent, on va regarder uh, des témoignages et de voir là où, uh, où Dieu a clairement agi dans la vie de chaque de, de personne. So come on, let's have a look. Regardons. C'est un mardi soir. Mon frère m'a appelé pour me dire qu'il est en détresse respiratoire. Alors je lui ai dit d'aller à l'hôpital. Pendant que moi je priais et j'ai appelé l'équipe de prière, nous avons prié. Et euh, le mercredi matin, il est en réanimation, mais il n'y avait plus de fièvre. Et le jeudi matin, il était complètement guéri, plus de fièvre, plus de tout. Et les médecins ont fait le test du Covid-19. Il avait des traces effectivement le jeudi matin, mais le jeudi après-midi, ils ont fait deux tests. Il était négatif. Ils étaient étonnés car il n'avait eu aucun traitement. Aujourd'hui, il est encore en bonne santé, il n'a aucune, euh, aucune séquelle, il est restauré, guéri par la grâce, la prière et la foi. Pour ce confinement, on a tout simplement décidé de maximiser le temps de qualité en famille. Donc beaucoup de jeux, des sessions de karaoké, de la louange, de la pâtisserie, et à une heure on fait de la zumba tous les jours. Évidemment, on n'oublie pas notre collègue ou en prenant des nouvelles de nos membres, de la famille, des amis et enfin prendre du temps à la prière. Euh, J'ai été découragée à une, euh, une nuit où qui s'est vraiment très mal passé, où on a failli perdre euh, les patients dont je m'occupais. J'étais vraiment pas... Euh, Enfin, j'étais pas bien, voilà. Et, euh, et juste euh, d'avoir pris le temps de prier et de dire, euh, Seigneur, enfin, euh, de lui avouer déjà ma faiblesse en soi, de juste crier à Dieu et de lui dire, mais, enfin, euh, donne-moi la force, quoi, de tenir et de faire mon travail et de venir en aide à ces gens. Et on est à trois semaines. Je remercie Dieu parce qu'il euh, a renouvelé mes forces, il a été fidèle. On a pu réaliser des appels téléphoniques euh, auprès de, de nos équipes et en fait, euh, lors de l'un de ces appels, on a pu se rendre compte qu'en fait, il y a une personne qui était, qui était dans le besoin et euh, donc du coup, bah, tout de suite, on, on s'est mis en, en relation avec Certaville et puis on a essayé de voir qu'est-ce qu'on pouvait faire pour cette personne et en fait, ça, on a pu rapidement en fait, trouver des solutions, donc euh, des solutions simples mais efficaces pour euh, cette personne, donc ça a été de faire des courses pour elle et de pouvoir lui, les lui emmener en fait, euh, directement chez elle. Et, euh, et ça fait une vraie différence dans, dans sa vie. Dieu m'a mis à cœur euh, d'envoyer une lettre à un membre de ma famille, euh, de ne pas voir euh, ses défauts parfois comme on a l'habitude de le faire, ou euh, les problèmes, mais Dieu m'a mis euh, à cœur en fait, de l'honorer et euh, d'écrire de, de, dans cette lettre toutes les qualités et de le remercier en fait, clairement pour euh, tout ce qu'il a pu faire pour nous durant ces derniers temps. Donc, euh, donc c'est ce que j'ai fait, je lui ai envoyé et euh, il a été clairement euh, touché par cette lettre, il a vu l'amour de Dieu donc, euh, et je sais que ça a été un facteur d'union au sein de ma famille. Moi je suis reconnaissante envers l'église pour les choses qu'ils ont mis en main afin, de vraiment, euh, euh, afin que nous puissions rester unis, afin que nous puissions rester euh, fermes dans la foi et que nous puissions vraiment être encouragés à travers euh, la parole de Dieu. Et je suis reconnaissante envers ce que Dieu a mis dans le cœur de chacun d'entre nous et de ce qu'il continue de faire pour chacun d'entre nous à travers ce confinement. Et euh, je remercie euh, 
vraiment euh, toutes les personnes qui prennent de, de mes nouvelles, des nouvelles euh, des, de mes amis. Et euh, je suis reconnaissante vraiment pour, euh, pour cet amour qui continue de grandir chaque jour. Donc, quand on a commencé les services en ligne, on a créé un WhatsApp groupe entre copines. Et justement, quelques jours après, une d'entre elles était diagnostiquée avec le COVID-19 et elle nous a appelé en larmes. Ça m'a beaucoup impressionnée et c'est là où je me suis rendu compte qu'il fallait activer ma foi pour pouvoir prier. Et donc, plusieurs jours après, elle m'appelle, elle me dit « tu ne vas pas me croire, j'ai senti un vent de Dieu, une brise dans mon appartement ». Et donc, j'ai pu lui rappeler que c'est le pasteur Brian Houston qui a partagé ça lors de la dimanche de la vision. C'est le vent du sud, la brise, qui apporte de la bonté. Et justement, le lendemain matin, elle s'est réveillée complètement guérie. Elle a reçu sa guérison de Dieu. C'est une fille qui avait été de passage à Ilson Massy il y a 2-3 ans et qui n'était pas revenue depuis. Euh, et en fait, mon appel tombait à pic parce qu'elle euh, vit seule et euh, elle commençait à présenter des symptômes du virus depuis quelques jours. Donc elle était un peu inquiète. Donc je lui ai proposé à la fin de l'échange de prier ensemble ce qu'on a fait. Donc on a, on a vraiment déclaré la guérison complète euh, de, de ses, ses maux de tête, sa toux et, euh, et sa fièvre. Et, euh, et quelques jours plus tard, elle m'a envoyé un SMS pour me dire que, euh, que ça y est, elle n'avait plus de symptômes. Elle était complètement soulagée. C'est la maman de Lynn derrière la fenêtre qui nous fait coucou parce que son état s'améliore. Elle va mieux et si tout va bien, dans une semaine ou deux, elle est de retour à la maison. Ouais, on a vraiment, vraiment été encouragés déjà, nous, dans notre foi. Les amis qui ont prié pour nous ont été encouragés aussi de voir que leur prière était efficace. L'église est encouragée et le corps médical, le médecin encore me disait, bah voilà, de voir une femme qui s'en sort alors que tout était prédestiné à ce qu'elle s'en aille, bah ça nous donne envie de continuer. I was just hit by the Holy Spirit because I had realized just how far I had strayed from my first love. I just began to cry like first in out of repentance because I I was just so sorry that over the years I had let my faith um, become dry and then I cried again but this time out of joy because I just had this realization about how much God loves me and so I'm so grateful for this time that I was able to just stop and listen to him and hear his call back. Well, how encouraging were those testimonies? Ces témoignages sont tellement beaux. Camille, I love hearing them. Ouais, c'est encourageant, j'adore écouter ça. And uh, do you know maybe maybe if where you're watching you um You know, you'd love to fill a testimony in or even do a praise report or a prayer request. You can do that on our application. Et uh, c'est l'opportunité de te faire savoir qu'au travers de l'application, tu peux soit nous tenir informés de ton témoignage ou autrement uh, de sujets de prière. And another thing you can do is actually on the on the screen on YouTube, you can actually share this link to this service so other people can hear and watch that. Maybe maybe you've got friends and they've never seen or be part of our church service. Maybe you'd love that. Il y a aussi donc uh, sur, euh, sur le, le bas de, de, de l'écran, effectivement, sur différentes façons euh, de pouvoir partager notamment donc, ce message, ce service à d'autres personnes, peut-être des, des collègues, des membres de ta famille, et c'est juste une belle opportunité. Yeah, so, um, hey, over Easter, another opportunity is we want to be a blessing into people's lives. Ouais, l'autre chose qu'on veut faire, qui nous tient tellement à cœur au travers de, de cette saison de Pâques, c'est d'être une bénédiction dans la vie des autres. And so in the Lafayette Church, we have, over this, over this period, we have, it's called Operation Pâques. Donc on a Opération Pâques. And we want to be a blessing, it's about wanting to be a blessing into people that work in hospitals, uh, police, we want to be a blessing into maybe these families or people that are in need. And as a church, we want to be able to meet people's needs. Ouais, donc il s'agit d'être une bénédiction notamment pour les personnes uh, dans les, qui travaillent dans les hôpitaux, les maisons de retraite, yeah. commissariat de police aussi, et bien sûr, en partenariat avec les associations, de pouvoir être une bénédiction dans des, uh, dans des besoins très concrets, spécifiques. So I'd, I'd really encourage you, if you're able to, to play a role. I think sometimes we can ask, how can we help people in this time? Social distancing, um, in, a, in a way, makes it hard, but would love to find ways to do that. So maybe you can contribute, be part of that, to be an answer this pack. Donc, euh, oui, effectivement, juste de pouvoir... Euh Uh, juste voir uh, si vous pouvez um, ouais, contribuer à quelque chose, uh, jouer tous, chacun d'entre nous une part et de voir comment est-ce qu'on peut répondre à, à, à chacun de ses besoins et d'être une bénédiction dans la vie de toutes ces personnes. Fantastique. 
Hey, right now we're going to come around our giving. On va arriver au moment où on apporte. And I think what a great verse to read this morning. Et j'aime tellement justement ce verset. Is in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Donc en effet Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son fils unique afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse pas mais ait la vie éternelle. So you know as you prepare this week or be alors, part of bringing your tithe and offering. Oui, alors que tu te prépares à porter ta dîme et l'offrande. As we honor God. Alors que nous honorons Dieu. I love to think of how he loved us. J'aime tellement penser à son amour pour nous. And the heart of our God was continually to give. Et le cœur de notre Dieu est de constamment donner. He gave his son. Il a donné, il a offert son fils. He gave life. Il a donné la vie now and for eternity pour le à, à présent et puis pour l'éternité and i just want to encourage us as we come around and giving et je voudrais alors du coup nous encourager dans ce moment to do it out of a spirit of love qu'on puisse le faire we desire to worship god au travers d'un esprit d'amour celui de, first, celui de l'adorer celui de le mettre en premier and do it as god did loved us ouais et le faire de la même nature qu'a fait um, c'est cette c'est la nature d'aimer au travers de son amour. God loved us, we want to love him. Ouais, Dieu nous a aimé donc on veut on veut l'aimer à notre Come on, let's prepare. Why don't you have a look at these video practical ways to give? Et euh, et alors que tu te prépares ou alors que tu te demandes peut-être comment comment tu fais, du coup on a on a une vidéo là pour pour te montrer. Let's have a look. Ouais. Grâce à la technologie, c'est maintenant plus facile que jamais de contribuer et de donner. Voici comment. Téléchargez l'application Ils sont Give sur votre smartphone. Après avoir ouvert l'application, sélectionnez votre campus, le montant de votre don et la carte que vous souhaitez utiliser. Vous pouvez même activer l'option d'un don récurrent en activant le bouton sur la gauche. Cela vous permettra d'automatiser le don régulier d'un montant prédéfini. Vous pouvez choisir l'option hebdomadaire ou mensuelle. Merci d'investir dans la vie des autres Well, church, we're in for a treat this morning. Donc c'est vraiment spécial ce matin. And we're going to hear from our global senior pastor. Parce qu'on va entendre de la part de notre pasteur mondial. Brian Houston. Brian Houston. And they're going to be blessed. Et vous allez être bénis. Come on, why don't we give him a hand? Donc ouais, ensemble, on l'applaudit. As he comes and brings the word. Alors qu'il vient apporter la parole. À tous les disciples de votre ville. Pensez à l'exemple que Jésus, loin par Dieu, nous a laissé. Que ses pensées deviennent notre motivation. Il a existé sous la forme de Dieu. Pourtant, il n'a pas regardé son égalité avec Dieu, comme un butin à préserver. Mais il s'est dépouillé lui-même de sa gloire extérieure en s'abaissant pour devenir un simple serviteur. Il est devenu humain. Il s'est humilié. Il s'est rendu vulnérable. Il a choisi de se révéler en tant qu'homme. Il a été obéissant. Il a été l'exemple parfait, même jusqu'à la mort. La mort d'un criminel par la crucifixion. Au travers de cette obéissance, Dieu l'a exalté et a multiplié sa grandeur. On lui a donné le nom au-dessus de tous les noms. L'autorité du nom de Jésus fait fléchir tout genou par révérence. Toute chose et toute personne se prosternera devant ce nom. Et toute langue confessera dans toutes les langues. Jésus-Christ est Seigneur, apportant gloire et honneur à Dieu, son Père. Yes, it is Resurrection Sunday, and what a day. 
It's a day to celebrate. Hey, maybe it's time you put some good praise music on at home and started dancing around the lounge room because we have a whole lot to be grateful for today. I love a good comeback story. I love it when someone gets up off the canvas and emerges with their own resurrection story. We've actually got in our church here in Australia, a former boxer, two-time world champion. His name's Nigel Benn, and he's legendary in the UK and especially in the boxing fraternity. He had an epic rivalry with another boxer called Chris Eubank back in the day. Well, Nigel, like a lot of people who don't know Jesus, his life back then was spiraling out of control. I don't know all the details, but I think he would be open about the fact that he was a womanizer and partying and living the life that was destroying his own life and destroying his marriage and destroying his relationships and everything else. And in a radical turnaround, he found Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour. And today, uh, his wife is one of our voluntary pastors doing incredible work caring for people. But on top of that, he is the most humble guy you would never imagine his history. In fact, be, between services, we have a lot of services on a weekend, and between services, you'll often find Nigel in the kitchen, out the back, humbly cooking for those of us who have to do multiple services. He's a wonderful guy, and his story's a story of resurrection. It's that Sunday. I believe God is gonna give many of you a resurrection story from this current crisis. Literally, businesses turning around, what was dead, coming alive. So Friday morning, I spoke about the Christ hymn. That's what scholars have called it. It's a poetic hymn sung by the very first generation of the church. And its six stanzas are based on six beautiful poetic and prophetic verses in Philippians chapter two. The first three verses are Jesus' downward journey from glory to the grave. Philippians 2, 6 to 11, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And then the next three verses are Jesus' upward victorious journey. Therefore, verse nine, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. So it's like a victory sign, a V, and it's a poetic overview of the Easter message. Jesus journey downwards from heaven to earth and to death on a cross, and then his journey upwards from death to glory, to exaltation and honour. So Paul captures in six verses the whole story of Jesus, the whole Easter story, the story of what God has done in Jesus for you and me and for the whole of humanity. It's full of deep theology, but also has powerful practical applications in yours and my everyday lives. In this unprecedented COVID-19 season in world history and in our church's history and in yours and my story, this jam-packed poem has so much to say to us. On Good Friday, Jesus' downward journey, we learned about the kind of God Jesus made known, not an aloof or hard or distant God, but a humble God who loves and serves in an act of self-emptying. We learned that Jesus' journey is like our own, a journey that involves disappointment, pain, tragedy, weakness, meaning He's able to understand us and help us when we are in our own difficulties. And we learned that Jesus' downward journey is a tremendous example for His people to follow, not grasping and grabbing things to ourselves, but giving of ourselves in obedience and humility and service and kindness toward others. But today, of course, Resurrection Sunday, it's the day we get to focus on and celebrate Jesus' upward journey. It's the day when we fill our hearts with praise and gratitude for His resurrection life. So on Good Friday, we follow Jesus' journey from heaven to earth, from God to human servant, from ultimate power to a shame-filled death on a cross. But today, 
we see that journey turn around and become an upward journey of exaltation from the lowest of lows to the highest of heights. In His downward journey, we saw Jesus humbling Himself, Jesus emptying Himself, Jesus serving, Jesus dying. But in His upward journey, we see God the Father take the stage. And it's God who does the raising, the exalting, the giving. And it's God who gets all the glory. The God and kings of old used their position of power to extort or to exploit, to dominate, to take advantage of others, all in an effort to grasp glory, honour or exaltation to themselves. But Jesus is exactly the opposite. He emptied Himself and forsook honour. And so then it's like the Father stepped up. It's like God climbed into the ring. The father and son were tag teaming and God tags Jesus and says, it's my turn, son. I love that thought. Or as it says in verse nine, therefore God exalted him. Therefore God raised him high. I love it. When we look at Jesus journey downwards, but then suddenly, therefore God, therefore the father, God exalted him. God raised him high. Jesus did the emptying, then God did the filling. Jesus did the humbling, then God did the exalting. He exalted Jesus to the highest place at His own right hand in God's heavenly throne room. And Psalm 110 verse one says, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Imagine it, from the depths of despair, Jesus exalted to the right hand of heaven. And in exalting Him, God gave Him the name that is above every single other name. And exactly what name is that? It is the name of the Lord, Yahweh, that I am, that I am, which was revealed to Moses at the burning bush. It's that same name. The name of the Lord is the name that is above every other name. And it is this name that is given to Jesus. He is now the Lord Jesus Christ. And every single thing that was true about God ever since creation, is now vested in Jesus. He's the God of creation. He's the God of Israel. He's the God of the church. He is the Lord of the world. Praise God. And at that name, every knee will bow. Every angelic and demonic knee, every believing and unbelieving knee, and all the dead of all time. Everything and everyone in all creation, past, present and future, will bow in homage before Jesus. And every human, angelic and demonic tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And because Jesus is not interested in grasping glory to Himself, He will pass on all the glory that will be heaped upon Him by all of creation to God. So what does the upward half of Jesus' journey tell us? Well, first, it tells us what God is like. In Good Friday, we talked about the downward part of this message, telling us what Jesus is like. Now, the resurrection, the redemption. First, it tells us what God is like. Well, our world and worldly religion often paints a picture of God who wants to keep you low, who wants to suppress and oppress, an angry, judgmental God who's out to keep you small. But here we see a totally different picture of God, a God who lifts you up, who raises and who honours, who exalts. Yes, as James chapter four, verse six says, God opposes the proud. But the same passage goes on to say, but shows favour to the humble. In Psalm three, verse three, it says, but you Lord are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. Well, that's the picture of God we see throughout the Bible. The picture of a God who lifts people up, lifts them up into salvation, up into blessing up into His promise, up into destiny, up into their true, full and flourishing humanity. As God said to Adam and Eve in the very beginning, it's in Genesis 1 verse 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth. He said to Israel, after He had brought them out of slavery in Egypt, in Deuteronomy 28 verses two to six, all these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city, and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks, your basket and your kneading trough will be blessed. You'll be blessed when you come in, you'll be blessed when you go out. 
what Peter proclaimed in the early days of the church, Acts chapter 3, verse 19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. As Paul says in Ephesians 1, 3, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And again, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8, and God is able to what? bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you'll abound at every good work. And then all the way through to the very end, to the last chapter of the Bible in Revelation 21 verse 4, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Don't get me wrong, God hates sin and evil. He hates it so much, He sent His Son and allowed Him to die on that cross to eradicate sin. But why does He hate it so much? Because He loves humanity. He loves you. He loves me. And all sin does is distort or corrupt and destroy everything that God loves. From the very beginning to the glorious end, God is a God who wants to lift humanity up. This whole plan from Genesis all the way through to Revelation, from creation, through to the fall, through Israel, through Jesus, through the church, and through to the end of time, is to lift humanity up. So first, it tells us what God is like. Second, Jesus' upward journey is a promise or a model of our own journey. When Jesus went from death to glory, He didn't just do that journey as God, He also did it as a man, a human being, as one of us. And He made that journey as a man so that we can make that journey as well. His journey will become our journey. It almost sounds too incredible. So what does it really mean for you and I today and for you and I in these uncertain times? Think again about how our journey starts. We were all far from God. We were all lost in sin. We were, as the Bible puts it in Isaiah 53, like sheep who have gone astray. Or in Ephesians 2, without hope, and without God in the world. You and I were effectively dead, but the moment you gave your life to Jesus, you became a son or a daughter of the living God. You were given eternal life. You passed from death into life. So the start of your upward journey is just like Jesus' upward journey from the grave. And so how is the journey ultimately going to end? Your ultimate destination is resurrection, never to die again. I'm the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Beautiful. Your ultimate destination is to rule in Jesus' kingdom forever. Your ultimate destination is to share in the glory of God. As Paul says in Romans 8, 17, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in His sufferings, in order that we may also share in His glory. So the start of our upward journey is like the start of Jesus' journey. And the ultimate end of our journey is like Jesus' journey. I think sometimes people wonder how we can know that for sure. How can we know that we know that we know? Well, apart from the fact the Bible tells us so, there is another powerful piece of evidence and His name is the Holy Spirit. The Scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit is given to us as a foretaste, a taste ahead of time, and a guarantee, a deposit, just like you put a deposit on a house. It's a foretaste of what our future will truly be. Paul says this way in Ephesians 1 verse 13 and 14, when you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession. Earlier this year at our Vision Weekend, I described this year for us as a year of Holy Spirit significance. We're pressing into the Holy Spirit with a new passion and hunger and experiencing the Spirit in refreshing and powerful ways. What is all of that new experience of the Spirit? It's a foretaste of what is to come, our ultimate destination, resurrection, eternal life, Jesus' kingdom, sharing in God's glory. So when we are filled and refilled with the Spirit and we enjoy afresh His life and His power and presence, we're getting a little foretaste of glory. Think about that. Oftentimes in wine districts, people go wine tasting. It is a foretaste of 
that particular wine. Or even when someone goes to a restaurant, the waiter will give you the opportunity to first taste the wine. You taste how good or maybe how bad the wine is going to be. Well, let's talk about the new wine of the Holy Spirit and understand that that's exactly the Holy Spirit. The way He's working in our lives today is a foretaste of just how good eternity is going to be. Like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13, for now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, but then we shall see face to face. Maybe you ask, what about in between? What about life right here and right now? What about all of this that's going on? around and about me? What about life in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic and all that has come and is coming with that? Right now, every day seems naturally speaking to be getting worse. We do know there's gonna be a redemption story. We do know there will be light at the end of the tunnel. But what does Jesus' journey really mean for me at this time of my life today? I think the easiest way to answer that is just think about what we have both in His downward and His upward journey happening at the same time. On the one hand, like we read just before in Romans 8, 17, we share in His sufferings. Our journey through life is going to involve challenge and disappointment or difficulty, hardship, and for some people, sadly, tragedy. But on the other hand, as Proverbs 4, 18 says, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day. Or in Proverbs 15, 24, the way of life winds upwards for the wise. Thank God because of Jesus, life doesn't have to spiral downwards. It can wind upwards, just like Jesus' upward journey. Because we're destined for an upward journey that leads all the way to God's glory forever, we bring that upward momentum, that overcoming spirit and share in Jesus' own upward journey. As He said Himself in John 16, 33, I've told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. And in Revelation 3, verse 21, to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. So, as I draw towards an end, it's Resurrection Sunday. Let's remember Jesus has risen. Jesus has been glorified. Jesus has been given the name above every single other name. Jesus is the exalted Lord of all. And let's also remember His upward journey is a model for yours and mine. Today, we remember that we too have been raised to life have been given life forevermore. And we look forward to living with God forever and ever, sharing in His glory, sharing in His life and in His victory. Well, let's remember that our journey through life is an upward journey, even when we're faced with hardship and difficulty. I pray you'll rise up with that same spirit of overcoming and that you'll push forward, onward and upward into all that God has for you. We used to sing a song <laughs> back in the day in church, it's still a hymn may be sung in many places. I am pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. It goes on, Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land where love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Hey, it wouldn't be a sermon if I didn't get a chance to sing. It's the only chance I ever get. No one ever lets me sing anywhere else. So here's the story, friends. Jesus has risen. He is risen. We're going to stay in faith. We know the best is yet to come. And from Bobby and I, and really from everyone at our church, big happy Easter. We love you. Things are going to get better. Amen. Well, what an incredible word from Pastor Brian. Donc, quelle parole absolument merveilleuse. So thankful for our global senior pastor. Well, on est tellement reconnaissant pour uh, notre pasteur mondial, Brian Houston. And uh, maybe today, et peut-être qu'aujourd'hui, as you're listening to that message, alors que tu écoutes ce message, is maybe today you realize your need 
of Jesus. Tu viens à réaliser le besoin que tu as de connaître Jésus. The life that he gives. La vie qu'il offre. And maybe today you've never made that decision. Et peut-être que jusqu'à présent tu n'as jamais encore pris cette décision. Maybe you're watching this service. Tu regardes ce service. And you've said to your heart, man, I need to know Jesus. Et là tu te dis Ok, j'ai vraiment besoin de Jésus. Friend, maybe you've heard about Jesus. Et mon ami, peut-être que tu as entendu parler de Jésus. But if you'd be honest, you'd say you don't really know him. Mais, euh, mais, mais si tu es honnête, tu, tu, peux, tu peux dire que tu ne que tu le connais pas vraiment. And today, Et aujourd'hui, I'd love to pray a prayer with you. j'aimerais prier avec toi. I'd love to pray with you today ouais, prier for you avec to come toi to know Jesus. que tu puisses inviter Jésus. Friend, Jesus came and died and rose again. Il est venu, il est mort, mais il est ressuscité. He did what we couldn't do. Il a fait ce que nous ne pouvions faire. And when we put our trust in him, et lorsque nous plaçons notre confiance and ask en him lui into our lives, et, qu'il, um, et qu'on l'invite dans notre cœur, he says give us life now and forever more. Et, um, il est dit qu'il, qu'il nous donne la vie maintenant et pour l'éternité. So if that's you today, donc si c'est toi aujourd'hui, I'm going to pray a prayer and then Kemi's going to pray a prayer. Je vais d'abord prier donc en anglais et puis après moi ce sera en français. And why don't you pray this prayer in your heart with us? Et, uh, et que tu puisses prier, que ça vienne de ton cœur cette prière. Uh, joins-nous. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today for your Son Jesus that he came and died and rose again to give me life now and forevermore. And today I ask that you'd forgive me of my sin and my past and you'd come and live in my heart and you'd be my Lord and Saviour every single day of my life in the name of Jesus. Ouais, merci Seigneur pour ton grand amour, pour ton sacrifice à la croix, pour le pardon de mes péchés. Aujourd'hui, je t'invite à venir dans mon cœur. Je veux déjà te demander pardon pour tous mes péchés, d'avoir vécu loin de toi. Mais aujourd'hui, j'accepte ton grand amour et, et je suis reconnaissant pour tout ce que tu as fait pour moi. Merci pour ce nouveau départ, pour cette, cette vie avec toi, tes plans, tes buts pour ma vie. Seigneur, je veux te connaître tous les jours de ma vie et aide-moi au travers de ton esprit à te connaître et à te suivre. Dans le nom de Jésus. Amen. 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 Come on, why don't we give them a hand? Donc on t'applaudit si c'est toi. What a fantastic decision. Ouais, merveilleuse décision. And uh, if you prayed that prayer for the first time. Donc si c'est la toute première fois que tu fais cette prière. Or maybe you know you're away from God and you prayed that prayer again. Ou bien sûr que ça faisait un moment que t'étais, bah, tu vivais loin de Dieu et que voilà tu, tu renouvelles vraiment ce désir aujourd'hui. We'd love to help you. On aimerait t'aider. And uh, you can get in contact with us. Tu peux nous contacter. And either send us an email, get in contact with us, and we'd love to help you. Donc nous envoie un email par exemple sur le site internet on aimerait vraiment vous aider well what a fantastic service ouais très très beau service don't forget operation pack n'oublions pas opération pack find a way to be part of that if you can ouais que tu puisses trouver une façon de participer à cela si tu le peux and uh, another great thing et une autre très très bonne chose is that we at tonight c'est que ce soir at 5 hein, o'clock ouais donc ouais as, oui à 17h there is going to be a spectacular a Easter spectacular. Il va y avoir un spectacle de Pâques. It's called King of Heaven. Qui s'appelle King of Heaven. It was from Hillsong London and we're going to put subtitles on donc, it. Donc il vient de Hillsong Londres et on a mis des sous-titres. I've seen it. It's amazing. Et donc Brandon l'a vu et c'est extraordinaire. And I want to encourage you at five o'clock to come back here, watch it. I know you're going to be blessed. Invite people. Donc je vraiment t'encourager. Reviens, connecte-toi à nouveau à 17 h pour voir ce spectacle. Tu vas aimer, c'est sûr. Et... And if you want to be part of Discovery, you can connect that after the service. Et si tu veux faire partie de Parcours Découverte, tu peux te connecter après le service. But church, we just want to say we love you. Mais on veut vous dire qu'on vous aime. Have a fantastic day. Que ça soit une belle journée. Be blessed. Soyez bénis. In the mighty name of Jesus. Dans le nom tout puissant de Jésus. He is alive. Il est vivant. He is risen from the dead. Il est, ouais, résur... La... Il est ressuscité. Jesus. Jésus. Is our Lord and Savior. Et notre Seigneur et Sauveur. Be blessed Soyez bénis. in the mighty name of Jesus. Dans le nom, dans le nom tout puissant de Jésus. Amen. Amen.